This is a standalone discussion on the redox of oxygen containing organic compounds. By oxygen containing organic compounds, I am referring to alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. Now, before we start anything here, the fact that we're going to discuss redox may suggest that we go back to this initial discussion before, way, way, way back, wherein we had strict definitions for oxidation and reduction. Oxidation, symboled as bracketed O, can either be addition of oxygen, increased bond order to oxygen, or removal of hydrogens, whereas reduction, symbol bracketed H, can mean removal of oxygens, decrease of bond order to oxygen, or addition of hydrogens, which if you can notice these, Relationships are very much opposite of one another. Also note that I will be color coding here for easier understanding. Red are arrows or anything that's red are related to, 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 to reduction and anything that's green is related to oxidation. Both the arrows and the reagents. So, first things first, we need to know that our starting point for discussion are alcohols. And we should know the type of alcohols that we're dealing with. In order to know the type of alcohol, we should first identify the alpha carbon. That is, the carbon directly attached to the OH. So now, let's say you already know the alpha carbon. Count how many carbons or R groups are beside it. If there is only one, then I have a primary alcohol. If I have two, secondary. And if I have three, then tertiary. And also notice that one thing that's going down as my degree goes up is the number of hydrogens. If I have a primary car, uh, alcohol, then I have two free hydrogens here. In a secondary alcohol, I have one free hydrogen. And in the tertiary, I have no free hydrogen. And I'm saying that because the next thing I'm going to tell you is that the hydrogen is a requirement for oxidation. The bonds here to hydrogen are the only options you can choose for oxidation. So for example, if I have a tertiary alcohol, and then I ask you, Hey, do you see any hydrogen directly attached to the alpha? None, right? So meaning, in the first place, there's nothing to oxidize here. So let me start by saying that this cannot be oxidized under normal conditions. And although it may be true that there are some extreme conditions for this to be oxidized, we will exempt that from discussion of this topic. So now let's go back to the primary alcohol because this is where the chaos lies. So first, imagine that I oxidize it for the first time and we're only going to get rid of this H, meaning oxidize this bond. So by oxidizing this hydrogen, it also entails removing it entirely from the equation. So you notice that H has been erased. And in replacement, that bond that we removed will be converted to a double bond to the oxygen above. And also, take note that oxygen cannot be neutral with three bonds, so long story short, of course, I'm skipping the arrows once again, this H will also be removed. And here, fast forward, that should also be the case. So this is my first oxidation product right here, and we have the formula RC double bond OH. So what's this? Of course, if you're familiar with functional groups, you should already know that this is an aldehyde. Therefore, we can say, if you start with a primary alcohol, you can oxidize it using weak oxidizing agents like PCC or periodinane to give us an aldehyde. And because, you know, the possibility later that an aldehyde can even go further lies or exists, this oxidation where you start here but you only end here is called partial oxidation. Why partial? Well, because... You went here knowing that you can even go further here. So now, if I go here, what do I get? Let's see. We had an aldehyde here at the middle, right? And look at this H. The fact that I color-coded it means that this is also subject to oxidation. But if I oxidize it, what's going to happen to this? Well, of course, I cannot say uh, this bond will be another bond to oxygen. I mean, it, we know oxygens can only have a maximum of two bonds. So that means that this can be oxidized. I mean, addition of oxygen, right? So the H can actually become an OH. And therefore, we get RCOOH as our oxidation product. What's this? This is a carboxylic acid. And therefore, 
let's get back to the statement I had a while ago. From this to this is only partial because from this to this is what we can call full. So therefore, if I travel all the way from a primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid using a strong oxidizing agent, this is what I call a full oxidation. And now, notice how we use the words weak oxidizing and strong oxidizing agent. Yeah. Of course, if you're not going to do some kind of, you know, half-baked oxidation, then your oxidation was a weak one. So you needed a weak oxidizing agent. But if you want to go all out, start here, end here, then you need something stronger. And usually, our strong oxidizing agents are potassium permanganate and chromium-containing reagents like uh, potassium dichromate or sometimes chromic acid or sometimes chromium trioxide. Okay? So that's oxidation. But of course, we can go back using the red arrows and we call those reduction, like this one, right? So for example, if I have an aldehyde, I can use either LAH, which stands for or which is read as lithium aluminum hydride, or NABH4, which is read as sodium borohydride, to go to a primary alcohol. Take note that NABH4 is called a weak reducing agent for the reason that if I start with a carboxylic acid and I want to go with a, all the way to an alcohol, imagine that is a long travel ahead, I can only use LAH because it's the only one strong enough to get us from here to here. Can I use NABH4? The fact that it was not written means it cannot. So meaning, why can't it do it? Maybe because it's not as strong as LAH. That's why we call this weak. And therefore, from aldehyde to primary alcohol, we can just call this as a partial reduction process. But if I travel all the way from carboxylic to primary alcohol, then I can call that full reduction. Okay. So once again, from here to here, partial oxidation, here to here, full oxidation. From, from here to here is partial reduction, but from here to here is full reduction. Actually, I want to clarify one more thing. There is no direct reagent for the conversion of carboxylic acid to aldehyde, so actually this arrow is invalid. Okay. There is one way that we can convert something related to a carboxylic to an aldehyde, but I won't say it yet. We will reserve that for a future discussion. Yeah, the primary one is the most chaotic because we have to deal with two hydrogens. But now that in the secondary, I have only one hydrogen, there is no partial or full here because this is the only thing you can oxidize, right? So if we oxidize it, just like what I said a while ago, this H is going to be erased and that will be gone here and will be converted to a double bond O. This H will be gone. And this is our oxidation product. What is this? RCOR is a ketone. Therefore, I can correctly say that uh, I have a secondary alcohol. I can use any oxidizing agent, doesn't matter, to get me to a ketone. Or if I have a ketone, I can use any reducing agent to reduce a ketone back to a secondary alcohol. As you see, it's, it's, it's much simpler. Now, this reveals to you something interesting about the difference of aldehydes and ketones as I will discuss again in the future. The fact that if I have an aldehyde, it can even go further and become oxidized to a carboxylic acid. But the ketone stays here because it cannot be oxidized further. And that is the basis of very popular tests for differentiating aldehydes and ketones, which we call the reducing uh, tests, including the Fellings test and the Tollens test. Although the explanation for these tests are already beyond the scope of what I want to discuss right now, do note that there will be a time we will revisit these tests when we discuss in focus aldehydes and ketones. So this is, once again, the redox of oxygen-containing organic compounds. For more details on aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids and its derivatives, refer to my future discussions.